Hey, how you doing? This is Kitch, and you are watching me play Factorio. I mentioned in the last episode that I went ahead and made some more power producing things. Uh, so I want to get those down because we are experiencing some brownouts. That should double our power and put us in a good position for a little while. Let's see. We need science. Uh, all kinds of sciencey things. Uh, we'll just do. We'll just do that top row. Uh, what we really need is blue science. We need to get to that so we can start processing oil, but we don't even see any oil on the map, so it's uh, it, it'll be a little ways off. Uh, let's see. While we're doing that, let's come down and we'll expand out our coal mining operation just a tad. Uh, something like that, and then let's go over here and check iron because it's looking a little bit light. Uh, we've got some empty miners. We'll go ahead and take those out. You guys have done your job. We'll go ahead and expand this line out. Boy, still getting used to the new icons. It's it's a lot harder to tell when they're not moving anymore. And it's also... Uh, they, they seem kind of... <laughs> they're a little bit more bulky than the last ones. Uh, visually, that is. I mean, they're still the same size. All right, that's good. How many of these do we have left? We have two left. Uh, let's move this up a tile or two. One of the reasons why I really like the Ghost Placer Express mod is it makes this uh, early copy-paste actually have a function. Uh, can we combine that into one? Not that it's really doing much for us, but it makes me feel better. Uh, we've got a little bit there, but we're not going to get to it while we have that wall there. That's, that's fine. Uh, let's just even this out a little bit. We won't do a true lane balancer. It'll be just kind of a little cheaty lane balancer. Uh, just to get make sure stuff stays on both sides of the belt. And that should put us in a lot better shape. That should be giving us a full belt, if I'm not mistaken. And it appears like it is. Dale's uh, main lane balancer here is looking pretty good. <laughs> uh, we'll just we'll just leave it like that. Okay, that should at least give us some more stuff up here. Let's go ahead. We'll drop this stuff off. I am using even distribution. Uh, that's a mod I have installed. Um, I really like it. It makes it where you can evenly distribute things much better than you can in vanilla. If, and that's a big if, uh, you press the right button. <laughs> Left mouse button and not the right one. Okay, very good. All right, I think that gets rid of... Oh, we still have another miner. Well, that won't do. I'm going to go down and place that miner. We will roll the intro, and I will see you on the other side, where we will continue taking a look at some station design. Yeah, I know it's totally unreasonable, but I, I think it'll work out fine. No, we're fine as far as turrets are concerned as well. You don't have to worry about it. It's it's just going to be fine. Here, just just watch. All right, so let's take this station right here. And let's place it down. I actually think I want to face it this way. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is the way that... I just want to make make sure the orientation with our rail system is correct. Uh, for somehow, the left-hand, right-hand drive thing always seems to confuse me a bit. All right, so that's going out. So that is the exit. That's going to be the entrance. We want the exit to be on that side. All right, all is as it should be. Um, if we're building up, if we're building up, and we are. Uh, so I believe this to be the minimum size that a station can be. I technically think we can take this belt off and start our curve that way. Maybe. I feel like I've done that before, but we'll just, we'll, we'll make it the, the almost minimum. 
uh, that should be the almost minimum size. So this will be our unloading station for whatever it is that we're unloading at the place that we're, we're at. And then I want to come up a little bit, leave just a little bit of space. Well, let's see, how much space are we going to need? Uh, we're gonna need some more of these, that's for sure. Uh, we're probably gonna need some more of these as well that we currently can't make. Excuse me, <laughs> while I run down here. Uh, always very prepared. Grab a little bit more resource-related things. Uh, grab copper and gears. That all looks good. All right, now we should be able to make some stuff. Yeah, let's make a couple more of those. And um, we currently have two of those. Let's make let's make another five stack there. Uh, do we have? Let's grab the mini loaders as well. Well, I, I think I think this will be I think this will be fine. We'll be able to guesstimate off of that. So we'll have... Uh, I want to do most of the stuff from through the south. And that's going to give us six belts of things going out to the south. But if we do need more than six things, we will run to the north. And I want to make sure we have enough space uh, for that to occur. Uh, so we'll have mini loaders coming out. That can go off that way, that can go off that way, that can go off that way, and that can go off that way. So that will be the amount of space that we need in order to do, basically support 12 items coming into a single station, right? Maybe. Uh, so that means we can put the secondary station, let's put it right there and still give it a little bit of space for it to work with. And this secondary station is going to be my personal station for, for driving around uh, so that I can have a place to go to. And I want to do something a little different. Um, I played a lot with uh, temporary stations in the big series, in the uncut series, to, to get around. I, I, found it, I found it somewhat useful. There are some quirks about it that I don't particularly care for. And what I'm wondering is, let's just take this out here real quick. I wanna run a little bit of an experiment. Uh, that's that's not lined up at all, Kitch. Not even, not even a little bit. There you go, that's much better. Uh, what I wanna do, let's come over here and grab this train. And I want to throw it down here. We'll just throw some um, some fuel in it. We got some wood. We got a little bit of coal. We'll do that. And this is going to be our personal station. I want to give it a name. Uh, I could name it locomotive. That's kind of boring, though. Is there anything? Uh, let's see. Let's throw down a constant combinator. That should give us all of our signals. Raw fish. That seems uh, somewhat fitting, even though the icons changed. Uh, let's say item equals, is it raw fish? Haha, <laughs> it is. All right, so if we name all of our passenger stations with that particular name... And then I add a station for that guy here, put a condition on it. We'll just set it to a circuit condition, just a, a null condition. We don't want it to, to do anything. Um, if I, you know, set this right here, it is going to path to that station. The problem is it with, with just this, we're not guaranteed. It's going to go to the closest station and I'm wanting to name all my passenger stations that. Uh, so what I can do is, uh, can we click on the train, please? There we go. 
I can set a temporary station, and as long as my temporary station is before, is somewhere in this area right here, that train will go there. I can get out of it. That's going to be the closest fish station, and it's just going to go right up to it and park instead of going all the way back to base like it did in the big series or all the way to some other station. Uh, so we just name all of our stations fish, and we use the temporary station to get around, and then we don't have to worry about the temporary station, removing the temporary station, uh, making changing the condition on the temporary station, or setting it to manual mode. We don't have to worry about anything like that. As long as we're getting close to one of these stations, we can just step out and forget about it, and that, that'll just work out. I'm excited about it. Okay, so here is our base station design here. How are we doing on ammo? Not bad. How are we doing on turrets? We could throw one more. Let's do that. Uh, I should have one in my, my memory here, right? Yeah. Uh, let's throw it... Let's throw it in that general area. I'm just getting a little nervous. We haven't seen an attack in a while. And during the stream, it seemed like they were happening all the time. All right. Um, I have another blueprint book. It is called Kitch's Station Rails, also made in the Factorio blueprint, or Kitch's Blueprint book series. And this gives a lot of kind of miscellaneous uh, let's see, I call that a two-car left. Uh, we only... Two-car left? Really? That's that's what you're calling that? That should be one car. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was counting the engine in the name? All right. Uh, but in this, I also have these stackers. I would like to incorporate a stacker in here. If we can put that into the main build, that would be just golden. So yeah, if we take that and place that there, then we grab this blueprint book and place that there. We just need to line up this rail and this rail. Oh. Uh, will that will that shift by a rail? It won't. Hmm. Uh, we're gonna have to make this a tile bigger, right? That's the way. That's the way that'll work. So if we grab this. and put it right there. Expand it by a tile. Oh, we got science. Anything important? That's a new icon, isn't it? <laughs> I noticed the mining productivity icon hasn't changed yet. I'm sure we'll get to it. Uh, and we can't research all these, right? We can't research that one. All right, so we're ending we're ending the uh, ability of, for us to research with our small little bootstrap base. Uh, don't worry, it'll get fixed here soon. All right, so that should make it where these two rails line up, provided we get all the rest of this stuff lined up. Oh, sorry, flailing. Oh, and I, I put this uh, stacker in backwards. We actually need the chain signals in the front. That's that's not such a thing, though. We can we can easily adjust that. I do have uh, both versions of the stacker in the blueprint book. I just I selected the wrong one. Uh, there, and there, and there. Okay, that should be all straight, with the exception of the signals. All 
All right, we take that, we line it up right there, and then bring that down, and then we should be we should be lined up and perfect. Uh, do we have train stations? We should. Just seems like uh, invalid train stop position. Uh, why do you insist on being on the top? Oh, our, our signals are all messed up. Okay, once we get the signals fixed, uh, we should be able to place that down. All right, so you, 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 and you. Uh, we want, let's see, these signals, the regular signals on the top. And the chain signals on the bottom. Is that enough to, that's enough to fit in a three car train. So that's bigger than it needs to be, but still fine. Uh, we want a signal right there and a signal right there. We want it as close to the cross so that uh, the, the, the block clears up as soon as the train passes as far as it can. Uh, then, okay, we want our station, our station, and then we want these signals as close to that station as they can be. So again, the station empties up as fast as it can. I'll throw a regular signal there just to kind of break this up a bit. Maybe one right there as well. And then we want one more chain signal on the entrance to that stacker so that the, the, the trains can repath if they need to. All right, and I don't think we need any of that stuff anymore. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and remove all those deconstruct orders. I really see the leaves moving around. I like it. Nice touch. All right, so that comes in, and then, should we need it, uh, we can expand this to the south with more of these stations, and we should be fine. All right, how are we looking here? We've got some things now. Let's see what we can do to combine these two ideas. I've been thinking about it a little bit. And I don't see that there's a good way to to do this. I, I, I can see I can see how it would work. But it's gonna involve a lot of combinators. Just it's gonna involve a lot of combinators is is what that's going to be about. And I guess I'm okay with that. But maybe we can maybe we can condense it down. Uh, you know, iterative des iterative design, right? We 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 just we start with something that we know will work, and then we work back from there and see what we can't optimize. Uh, so that's going to be our output chest. We are going to have inserters that are going to be pulling. Those are eventually going to be stack filter inserters, but we still can't make those. Well, actually, we can. We just need. We can make these. Oh, no, we can't. We need the... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That scared me. <laughs> I don't know what noise I just made there. Um, that's that's my that's my sea of snake noise. Uh, oh, do we have any more turrets? Boy, I hope we do. All right, we should be fine there. We're running a little low on ammo. I might want to go back to base. And just pick up a little bit. Uh, that is a ghost there. Boy, it's kind of hard to tell, though, isn't it? Uh, we can't make any more wall, but we should have some stone over here in this chest, and we can get that hole plugged up there.
I knew they were coming. I uh, just didn't know when. All right, that should be good there. And while I'm thinking about it, let's uh, grab another radar. And uh, then we'll run some power over here to get rid of some of the blinky blinky. I do have a mod that I created called uh, Kitch's Less Intrusive Icons that makes this power blink a lot smaller and kind of offsets it a little bit. Makes it a little less annoying, but boy, it still it still blinks a lot. It also adjusts some of the um, module request icons that very much get in the way when you're trying to to do things. Uh, and I also made a mod called uh, Kitch's Dynamic Personal Lighting. It's a, uh, it just increases the light cone, but it's dynamic and then I can make it bigger and smaller if you would ever want to do that. Generally, I just make it as big as I can. Uh, but it, it was fun. I was, it's when I was learning how to make mods. Uh, but it's been super useful uh, in the playthroughs. All right, so that is set up there. And let's see, I think I want to start with the SR latch logic. Because it was kind of a pain to set up, but it really worked out well. Uh, let's start... Uh, let's reserve kind of like this train station-y area here for that. We've also got to think about... No, fuel will come Fuel will come from another location. All right, so we're going to need a constant combinator. Uh, we're going to need two arithmetic combinators, I believe. Then three decider combinators. Uh-huh. And then a decider and an arithmetic. We'll work on this spacing a little bit. I just kind of want to break them out into different groups. Uh, power pole, power pole. That should cover both of those. All right. So here I want to set what I want. And what I want are, in this case, stone bricks. Uh, this will actually be the amount per minute that I need. So if I'm building something that needs 100 stone bricks per minute, this is the input that I would use. If it's less, it'll be less. If it's more, it'll be more. All right, and then what I want to do is take that and send it into the back of these two combinators. And given that items per minute that we need, I want to calculate... A high water mark and a low water mark for when we want to call the train. And we can do this in minutes. So I want to make it as generic as possible when I can. So I want for each signal coming in, I want to multiply that by some number, which is the number of minutes that I want. Let's say... Let's keep it let's keep it easy for now. Let's say our low water mark is 1 and we'll output that as L. That's the amount of items that I want in that chest whenever the train is actually called. And I want this one to be our high water mark, which is how much stuff I want you to drop off at this station whenever you come through here, Mr. Train Sir. Uh so that if our low water mark was one minute, let's set our high water mark for something like five minutes. So in theory, what that's going to mean is when the stone brick train comes through, it's going to drop off enough items to run whatever this facility is for five minutes. 
And then when it drops down below where it only has one minute left of items, we're going to call a train to come and refill it up. We'll, we'll adjust those numbers a little bit later. I don't think those are realistic. I just want to kind of actually we might take this down to like three. Uh, just for for testing purposes. All right, and then we're going to have a signal that is coming down from up here that is going to be fed into the back of this combinator. And this is going to be all of the items that are currently in this chest. So we could have trees and sticks and engines and pistols, all kinds of stuff that's coming down on this wire. But I'm not interested in any of those things in this setup. What I'm interested in is only the stone bricks. So let's go over here and grab some of these. Let's grab all this stuff. Uh, let's grab these two. I want them. Uh, we're not interested in all this stuff. All we are interested in is the number of stone bricks that are coming through here. So we can do that by setting an isolation circuit. We want to take the amount of stone bricks currently going through. We want to add zero to that. We're not going to modify it. We just want that coming in. And we're going to output that as a number, a variable called T, which I'm going to say is the total, total that we have. All right, and we're going to use this T number to uh, run with our SR latch here. So let's go ahead and set that guy up. This will be our memory cell. If S is less than R, output S. And you are going to be our output R condition, and you are going to be our output S condition. All right, so R is going to be based off of the high water mark. So what I want to know is I want to hook that T total, which is the total items that we currently have in that chest. We want that hooked up to these two combinators. And then we want the outputs of these guys hooked into those combinators as well. So H and L as well as T are going into each one of these. And I want to say if T is greater than equal to H being the high watermark, I want to send out the reset signal. And if it's T is less than L, which is our low watermark, we want to send out the S signal. Okay. And then we want to take those two guys and send them into the back of our SR latch. And we should have the system working now. Okay, so we're getting... You're getting an input signal. You're outputting T. You're getting an input of T. All right, that's, that's right. We got to be less than 100 that's going to turn on our latch okay we're we're outputting uh, s less than r output s s greater than r output s okay there we go now it's working okay we're getting our s signal now and if we fill this up past uh, is it 300 i believe it's 300 our r signal comes through and we don't get a signal anymore. All right, that is what we currently want. All right, then we need to take this S signal. And let's see, that doesn't need to be a decider. That needs to be one of these. Um, I want to convert that back into the stone brick signal. But I only want... Uh, we want 
S to come in plus zero and output, not S, but we want to output the item that we want, in this case, bricks. All right, and I want to send that out on the network on the red wire. So what that's doing is telling us that's our, our need part of this. All that normalization and stuff like that, that should only ever be one brick. And if we get a brick coming in on the red network, that means that we need a brick. Or we need bricks active, right? Uh, let's go ahead, and I think we're good to set up basically this circuit right here. Uh, at least the want and the need. The need is coming through on the red line. Uh, the have on the train. Uh, let's see, RK84 is the name of that station. Let's go ahead and get you set up. Uh, get you some fuel. Something's going on there. Something's changed, or I've gotten really bad at clicking these these trains on the corners. It's just not it's just not working. I don't know why. <laughs> you got to be in just the right spot. There we go. All right, we. Yeah, that's super annoying. It might be squeak through. I guess that's a possibility. Uh, just circuit condition, sure, go. All right, you are now there. Uh, we just need a decider and a decider. Uh, you're coming from the station here. Uh, you're going to read each signal coming in. And if it's greater than zero, you're going to output each. And you are going to say if each signal equals two, output each signal. Uh, so do I have it into the back of that combinator? Uh, do I need it coming into the back of that combinator? And then the output of that, if it equals two, we're going to set it out, meaning that I have it and I need it. That is going to go into those inserters. Uh, we're going to set the filters, and that is all we should need to do. Uh, more science. We can get a couple of things here. Uh, not very many, though. And I think this is our last round of science that we can research. All right. Well, we could probably set up a bootstrap military. That might be something that we need to do. Uh, but first, we need to find out why this isn't working. Uh, because you don't have anything. All right. So if we put the stone in there. Oh, uh, not send to, to read train contents. All right, that should stop whenever the amount of stone equals 300. If this is working. All right, it did. And it should remain stopped until we get below 100. And it does. All right, so that's fine for stone. That would mean with this setup, for each item that we wanted to add, we would have to copy this, paste that, uh, set a new item here, stone, uh, stone, check mark, 
let's say we needed, uh, I don't know, let's do like 20, something kind of small. So 20 at the low mark, uh, 60 at the high mark, and then we need to set these converters as well. So three clicks. Not the super convenient, just combinator setup that we had before. Uh, then we need to take the output of this and send it to that power pole. And then we need to take the green power pole and send that into that. Uh, that should fill up until there's 60. Then stop. And then not do anything again until there's 20. 20? Yeah, okay, so why... Why is that not working? Uh, because there's more than 20 in there. Fifty. Okay. All right. That works. It's not pretty. It's not very modular, but it definitely works. And that's a good start. We can compress this down quite a bit, of quite a few tiles. We can definitely make it smaller. We could add an extra set of combinators down here to pull the signal off, kind of like we're doing here. And just have one combinator where we can set all of our requests. I think that might be a good thing to do. But then we would have the advantage we have of having these separate constant combinators here is that we always have to we always have to set them up. We don't want a situation where, you know, we set three items on the combinator, but we only have two rows down here. I don't know. Um, yes, definitely overcomplicating it quite a bit. But this is fun. Well, I'm going to think about optimizing this a little bit if there's some things that we can do. But um, I like where it's going, and it's doing exactly what I want it to do right now. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very pleased, at least with that part of it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, we do have a, a base minimum uh, lo unload station design here, so it's not all a wash. I think I just punched that biter to death. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I promise we'll get out of the circuits here very soon and start making trains. <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.